They've been called cheapskates, thriftaholics, and tightwads, but the Economides are a prime example of how a family can thrive, even in this tough economy, on a shoestring budget. I'm joined today by Steve and Annette Economides. Uh, they're the authors of the book, America's Cheapest Family, and gets you right on the money, your guide to living better, spending less, and cashing in on your dreams. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Good to be here, Daniel. So, did you two start out as shoestring budgeters uh, when you got married, or is it something that you um, learned to do over time? Great question. We did start out on a very shoestring budget. Steve was earning $13,500 a year. This was back in 1982, and I wanted to stay home and learn how to cook and keep a home, and so my job became um, stretching our pennies until they begged for mercy. Basically what happened was my dad told us that I should work two jobs and that should work one job and we should save every penny we made so we could buy a house in three years. And what we decided to do is I'd work one job and that stayed home to manage our house and manage our money. And within three years we had enough money to put 15% down on a house and that same house we paid off in nine years and our income didn't rise that much. By the time we paid it off our average income over the nine years was about $33,000. So the proof is that, that you can make financial decisions, you can live a good life, you can pay off a house on a limited budget just by being smart with your money. Um, so what are some of the best bargains that you guys have, have gotten over the years? Wow, we've gotten anywhere from Martin Guitars yep. for a fraction of the cost to cars. We pay cash for all our cars. And we usually look for someone who's desperate to sell the item, and you know, and that that's kind of a general rule of thumb. Is there are so many used items out there that if you find someone who's desperate to get rid of it, you're going to get a bargain. And so our one of our mottos is never pay retail because there's there's always someone who wants to get rid of the thing you want. When you find that person, you're going to find a deal. So cars, guitars, and and if you're patient you'll also find mm -hmm. a deal. So make a wish list of things that you want and you need and look around because there's all kinds of sources to get things used from consignment stores and thrift stores to garage sales, rummage sales, Craigslist, I mean, the, the, eBay. The it, house it, we're living in right now was on the market for a year before we bought it. The people were desperate to sell it. We picked up a bargain on it and now it's tripled in value even in this economy it's worth three times what we paid for it uh, we, we bought our first house as a repo from a bank they were desperate to get rid of it they gave us phenomenal financing at the time when uh, interest rates were 13 percent we got an 11 percent finance package from them and paid it off in nine years so there's always deals out there now it's really interesting that you say uh, come up with your list of things that you need and stick to it because I think a lot of people um, today are actually just jumping on any bargain that they can especially with those deals websites um, mm -hmm. and sales. Uh, is, is that something that you think uh, can be changed easily or is that like an ingrained habit? Impulse items are a very um, pertinent thing today and you're right the deals websites can be dangerous especially if you ha if you have a propensity to use shopping as a recreation mm -hmm. um, so you really do need to keep a list of things that you're looking for and and it can be more than things that you need it can be things that you would like to have it could be your wants we talk about needs wants and desires and a lot of people are living in the wants and desires and they're not really thinking about what do I really need so one of the biggest areas we do this with our kids in our third book uh, the Money Smart Family System, we talk about helping our kids develop a wish list. And a wish list is where they write down the things they want. And what it does is it takes it out of your brain, puts it on paper in front of your eyes, and you have more of a, a likelihood of finding those items and especially finding deals when you review that list regularly. So we've done that I mean, years ago. We wrote down, um, uh, let's see, a clock. We wanted a clock. We wanted uh, some, I can't remember some of the other things, clothing items. And everything we've written down, this was in 1982, we've got now our wish lists are way bigger we just remodeled our backyard uh, we're doing some other projects we, around the we house we need to build a shed yeah. there's all kinds the, of things. all those things go on the list and it helps you stay focused get your priorities and what what will happen is, is in the instance of the shed is now I start looking for used lumber and discounts on lumber so we'll start gathering the materials and eventually build the shed so it just helps you to get it out of your mind and helps you focus on the priority 
Uh, so at one point, you two were actually feeding your family of seven on $4,200 a year. Uh, how were you able to swing that? Okay, well... You make a list. <laughs> <laughs> um, $350 a month has been our grocery budget for a long, long time. We just upped it because food prices have changed. They really have skyrocketed. They've gotten smaller in quantity and larger in price. But we have, we're feeding five adults right now, and we're spending about 380 a month, I think, right. on groceries. Um, a lot of that is cooking from scratch and, and stocking up when things are on sale, looking at your food ads, utilizing your food ads that come in your paper, your once and once a week, uh, they're, they're there and and staying out of the stores because the more you're in the stores, the more you spend money. Hey, this this kind of takes everything we've talked about and puts it into one area and actually we believe that dealing with groceries is one of the fastest ways for a family to turn around their finances. So the first principle we talked about was, was prioritizing and so setting a priority for for not going to the store more than once a week that's that's a great way to do it and you do that by having a plan and right. the plan is writing down a shopping list based on what's on sale if you buy the items that are on sale they're 30 to 50 percent off retail if you plan your menu for the week around those items you're going to cut your grocery bill in half and it's a phenomenal thing right and our second book is cut your grocery bill in half with America's cheapest family we have an entire book just on grocery mm -hmm. savings and planning a menu is not as difficult as people think you know you can sit down for 15 minutes once a week and plan out your dinners and um, it can be simple things like if you're eating out three or four times a week maybe you go to the grocery store and you buy the bagged meals all in one bag and it's stir fry and you take it home and you have dinner ready within a half an hour so there's a lot of different ways to do it our book goes into a lot of detail on that so in addition to groceries uh, do you see any other like big uh, mistakes that Americans are making any areas they really can improve uh, in terms of developing money saving strategies one, one of the biggest ones is research the more you research, the more you save. The more options you have, the more money you're going to find. Uh, we, I used to work for in, a graphics, in the graphics industry, and we had one client that, that was a big uh, Fortune 500 company that never got quotes on anything, and they always overspent, and they're, they're, they, they had financial problems. Had another company that required any of their vendors to, to give three quotes. You know, whenever they were doing a project, those guys were always making money. And the same thing happens with us as individuals. The more quotes we get, the more research we do, the more informed we're going to be, the better deal we're going to find. And besides um, research, I think thinking ahead mm -hmm. is another thing that people... Planning. So planning, I guess. So people have really neglected that today. They're living for today, maybe tomorrow, but they're not thinking, oh my gosh, prom is coming in two months, or and I may need a tux or, or a gown. And so I need to start looking for those now when I go to a thrift store or a consignment shop. Or say it's May, you know back to school is coming in August. So all those back to school clothes should not be an emergency. They should not be something that you haven't thought about. You should be thinking about that and looking for deals throughout the summer to help with that. And, and that leads, you start by planning the things that are coming up this week, this month, this year, and eventually you become so good at it that you're planning things five years out, ten years out, you're planning your retirement. But you can't, it's not realistic to think that you can plan your retirement when you can't even plan this week's groceries. The other thing I think is a common mistake that Americans are making today is debt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the middle class is really almost no different than the low income uh, the, because they don't own anything. They have no accumulated wealth. They have car payments. They have house payments. They have credit card payments. They have school loans. There's no accumulated wealth. The only difference between the middle class today and the low income is that they have a degree or they have a better career. Or they have so a better looking car or house. Or so they earn more money, but they're not accumulating. Their net worth is about zero. Yes. And so they're, they're three to six months away from homelessness if they lose their job. And so I would say today, be careful about that debt that you're taking on. You know, it's, it's one thing to have debt for one thing, but by the time you take on debt for five different things, you're up to your eyeballs. So one of our mantras is, is keep our overhead low. 
And so we never would take on payments. What we do is we'd save the cash in advance and buy the thing for cash. We remodeled two kitchens. We paid cash for our cars. We paid cash for all of our vacations. And basically what we do is we figure out what money we have, and then we determine what we're going to buy. It's not the other way around. One of the things we say is that debt destroys and frugality frees. And um, I wish more Americans would realize that. I wish our government would realize that. Right. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you both for being here. I think uh, from your from your story and how you actually uh, are able to live on a shushing budget, even with your your large family, uh, we can all take away some tips and and hopefully tighten our wallets a little bit. Well, there thanks, you go, Daniel. Daniel. It'll produce great dividends.